Nothing in this recording is intended as investment advice, and the people in this recording may hold positions in the companies they talk about. Do not make any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to Zach's Traders Cafe. Today I'm joined by Mike Whitler, who's Managing Director at ECR Minerals. Hi today, Mike. I'm really well, Zach. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Right, busy week for ECR Minerals. Um, lots of people looking at the company, hoping it will be a, a scalable, um, a decent um, prospect in terms of uh, getting uh, the uh, stuff out of the ground. Uh, you've uh, obviously made a decent step towards that this week. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been uh, fantastic. It's super busy at the moment. We said earlier in the year we expected um, this period in the in the company's development to be a busy one. And it, yeah, I mean, it's it's busy than it even expected. Um, so yeah, we made a great appointment at the start of the week with Mike uh, Parker, ex-first quantum geologist joining the team. Um, we hope to get a lot more uh, out of Mike in the coming days, weeks and months. Uh, of course, on Tuesday, we announced the update regarding uh, Blue Mountain and the independent report, uh, which was conducted by Gecko. That was a you know, great set of results for us um, regarding the rate of recovery in the gold in the ground there. And of course, you know, we've got a, a broader update as well on our non-core assets and the disposal of those assets, having made uh, a number of um, advances on that front too. So, yeah, really busy uh, week so far, and hopefully uh, that won't be the end to it. I mean, obviously, the market's always looking, you know, with explorers and developers, always looking at the funding issue and also looking at uh, the potential uh, size of the assets, whether they're meaningful or not. Do you think that you've got into, you know, you've addressed those two issues in what you're doing? Well, look, I mean, one of the major problems that we see with companies that are listed is, um, is often directors don't have much skin in the game. Uh, as you know, Zach, Nick and I joined the company and took 90% of our remuneration in shares. So we're extremely cognizant uh, of the valuation in the market and our current share price uh, because, you know, that reflects on us. We've invested a year of our time, taking 90% of our salary in shares, and we'd like to see a return on that. So, you know, unlike many uh, companies and directors, we've got a, a, and we continue to take shares in the business, uh, we've got a, 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 you know, an agenda to make sure that any decisions we make are in the very best interest of shareholders, of which Nick and I are significantly uh, aligned with. So you are fully aligned. Uh, the second part of what I asked was related to uh, finding a sig you know, significant uh, assets and then proving, you know, the, and then obviously driving the value of the, and the share price of the company higher. Do you think you're on that sort of track as well? Yeah, apologies. I should have uh, moved straight into the second part of the question. Yeah, uh, of course, I think when you've got a valuation of £5 million, uh, £6 million, it's, uh, it's not difficult to find something that's considered significant. You know, our announcement on Tuesday highlights the uh, incredible amount of gold that we can recover. I mean, that pretty much pointed out or suggested that the historical gold production um, around... Blue Mountain and that Queensland Territory. Uh, the old timers were missing 75, 80% of the gold because it just wasn't visible. Um, and as, as heartbreaking as that may sound, it's incre incredibly uh, valuable to a business like ours. So, you know, we look at Blue Mountain now, and I think the Blue Kevil report, who we acquired the asset from, suggested there was up to 100,000 ounces. Um, if we can recover that at a much higher rate of, uh, of, of gold production, then yeah, I mean, I think it's it, you do the the, the five packet calculations at hundred thousand ounces at the current uh, the current gold price is, is more than uh, enough for us to uh, wet the whistle, so to speak. Right, I mean, uh, you we've known each other many years. Uh, you could say that you're a gamekeeper turned poacher in terms of what you're doing. Uh, if you were commenting on ECR Minerals, what do you think you would say to your followers uh, if uh, when you're when you were with your influencer hat on yeah you know incidentally that question's been asked to me a number of times of late and and look i think what i would say is i'd have a bit more sympathy um for directors of companies you know when i used to be uh, extremely harsh and going two-footed at times with you know in some of these situations i think what it's important to do is is it's important to make sure that 
as a, a as a director of a company that you're aligning yourself with shareholders, you give yourself enough opportunities or as many swings of the bat as you possibly can get in order to in order to get those you know big value driving events in the market. And I think you know for us the uh, accumulated tax losses of which are part of our non-core assets and the disposal. Uh, we you know, announced earlier this year that Argonaut had put a valuation on that of 18 to $22 million. They did suggest that we would look to recover about 50% of that. Again, very material to us. We've got uh, an asset at Brewing Lane, which has got about a half million dollar valuation. We already disposed of a number of non-core assets when we joined the company and, and raised funds for the business that way. So it's non-dilutive. Um, We've got the developments at Blue Mountain in July. Uh, we produced with a pilot plant some gold from that asset to demonstrate to the investment community that it, you know it could be done and it would be done. And subsequent to that, the Gecko report shows that uh, the enhancement of that gold is significant. We have only just received those results, so we'll need to do a bit more work, but we're very, very, very happy with it. I mean, it's probably the single biggest event for us. We've brought in people um, who, you know, have got a strong track record of delivery. So you look at Mike Parker and the projects he was involved in. He was running the 3,000-man team. He was involved in First Quantum during their most, you know, developmental period. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, I think, the only geologist I'm aware of that's had two world-class discoveries in one country. Um, so I'd say he ticks the box. So, you know, to, to answer your question in a roundabout way, I'm sounding like a politician there going off on a tangent, but in a roundabout way, you know, the questions I would be asking is, is there enough under the hood to make that engine roar? And uh, I believe there is. Uh, the other aspect in terms of, you know, ECR uh, minerals and, you know, its valuation and uh, the market sentiment is that we seem to be overwhelmed at the moment with explorers on the London market at a time of low liquidity. And maybe there are a lot of other companies vying for your, you know, for, for investor money. Um, do you think that there are, you know, that you've you've sort of addressed that issue that there are too many and that people can differentiate, you, you know, what you're doing and the merit of that versus other maybe subscale cash burning and non skin in the game um, explorers that there yeah, are? Yeah, yeah. Look, I get I get where you're coming from with this, and, and look, to answer your question, I think you're wrong. I think there's 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 a requirement for more of uh, the good companies. I think you're right in some respects that um, we need to see less of those companies that have exploited the market to their own ends and these lifestyle businesses don't have a place in the market. So, you know, in some respects, I agree and <laughs> disagree with, with your statement. Um, what is obvious is that there's been an under, um, uh, you know, there's been a dramatic reduction in the investment in this space for, for decades, actually. And, you know, we're starting to see a lot of m and activity and we're even seeing some of those sort of mid-cap companies coming down the food chain to sit around the table with smaller businesses. And, you know, I attend uh, or attended Minds and Money in November 2023 with Nick and we sat down with, um, you know, quite a number of very, very big companies uh, that had booked appointments to sit and talk with us. And, and you know, we're talking about companies with, valuations in the billions and when i was talking to the representatives i was saying look why is it you want to sit down with us and they said look to be perfectly frank um you know there's been such uh, an underinvestment in this space for so long that companies now don't have the runway or time to be able to build the pipeline of opportunities um from from you know grassroots and therefore sitting around the table with companies like yourself helps us understand you know where those opportunities may or may not be and, and that was a, a message that I took away from it. There was a lot of lithium companies and they were struggling and, you know, there was a bit of a damp squib in that department. But regarding sort of copper and gold, there was a huge amount of interest and that's continued in the reaction in pricing. And, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I'm confident that actually um, this space has, has, has got a huge runway. I don't see gold uh, withering on the vine anytime soon. I think it's a great place to be. If you can get into production in the near term, it makes you attractive. And if you've got a pipeline of assets, uh, as we have, that um, that are extremely interesting, then you're in a great spot. And you know, you you may be aware from um, from the recent announcements, we we're going to be drilling at Tambo uh, imminently, and you know, diamond drill results are also quite 
uh, attractive to geologists who like to look under the, the hood of the business. So, yeah, I mean, I think we've got more than enough to take us on the right trajectory. And, um, yeah, you, you know, you're right in pointing out that the, the, the market's quite challenging at the moment. So you've got to you've got to tentatively navigate that. And it's not necessarily an easy job, but it's one that we um, intend to take uh, on with both hands. Well, we look forward to that. In the meantime, Mike Whitlow, Managing Director at ECR Minerals. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.